Hey there, Trailblazers. Welcome back and uh, hope you are doing good. So the last video was all about uh, how to implement interface. What are the interfaces? We have also talked about how we can implement the factory class with the help of interface and a pickless field on the account object. This video, we are going to talk about uh, what is a strategy pattern that is also known as policy pattern or we can say yeah policy pattern is the other name of our strategy pattern we are going to take our code the code we have developed in the previous video that is going to we are going to modify the same code and we will use here apex classes interface custom metadata and custom field on the account object to implement this strategy pattern before that please give it a like subscribe for the youtube channel and uh, that will motivate us to develop the videos and put the videos on the regular basis. Now let's go ahead and quickly start implementing the strategy pattern. So first of all, good to see you again over here. Let's talk about what strategy pattern is in Salesforce. And then we will talk about what to, how to implement this. So a strategy pattern, the policy patterns that we also talk about, this is basically trying to solve a problem and provide the multiple solution at the runtime. When we say that runtime, Solve the problem. This looks like some heavy words. How to solve the problem at a runtime? How to select a solution at a runtime? So that we will see. So we have talked about in the previous video. Let's quickly talk about the problem statement first. So the problem statement is similar problem, but that we have solved in the previous video. So Bob is trying to implement a requirement, trying to know the latitude and longitude for the given location and also needs the ability to choose the location provider at a record label or uh, somewhere from the service classes they are trying to call the location provider and then they are giving us that this is my location provider for example google geocode bing api us geocoder there could be any service provider that bob or their team wanted to implement but they want to choose as a runtime Runtime means we have already talked about <clears throat> the previous video was if we increase the geoservice provider or the location provider, the number of providers we increase, we need to keep modifying the code. We need to keep modifying all the code which are related to this. First of all, we have to get a separate class. Then we need to get to the service class from here. The class is going to call. Then we need to go to the factory class, the factory class. Factory class is going to make the API call from the actual class we have developed. That is the problem statement that we have. Okay. Now to develop the strategy pattern, first of all, you might be using this. You might already be using, but you don't know the name of the pattern. That happens with most of the developers out there. So what it takes to develop the strategy pattern in Salesforce? Number one, one interface, which might have one or more than met more than one method. Okay, which may have one or more than one method at least one class that is implementing the interface as and all its methods so whatever the method we have that class is implementing this we can also name these classes as concrete strategy class now we are just giving them a fancy name that's it we can also say these are the implementer class for our interface that we have developed on the step number one then there will be one class which will be responsible for calling the concrete strategy class method that we are going to define at a runtime. So if I say I want to get a location provider, which is Google, this class, this class is going to call that class method at a runtime. It will define, okay, I got a Google. I need to find out where the Google implementer class is. Okay, this is a geocode. I need to find out what that class is responsible. US geocoder, Bing API. So that is going to define at a runtime without putting if and else. If and else, looks easy but those are very dangerous for software development life cycle whenever we are writing multiple fn else those are getting we are basically putting our code in danger so that's why we are using this interface and this strategy pattern now let's quickly talk about what we need here to develop it okay the number one thing is that we need a custom metadata with three fields and what are those fields over here? I already have that custom metadata name geocode. This geocode has three fields. One is active, which is a type of checkbox. 
the class name this is going to be the class name we can say the heart of our strategy pattern the class name variable in custom metadata here we are going to put the name of our class which is implementing a particular geo code for example google we are going to name whatever the class name is in the previous video we were using api name of our class in the pick list but now we don't need that like there is no such need that we need to put api name of a pick list in the uh, the class in the pick list here we are going to use metadata and then geocode service this is the service the same pick list values that we have in our account so in our account there is a custom field so remember we have created one custom pick list field in the previous video if you haven't watched please uh, pause this video watch that uh, video because that is the mandatory for this you know that video is mandatory for this video so here we have got a field called geocode service so if you remember this field has these values that we have added three values we have added uh, in previous video like this us geocoder google geocode bing api and the other thing that we have is similar similar values are over here under G google geocode service the field that we have so you can see these are the same values that we have now if you see values are different but the api name are same as whatever we have here inside account if you want now you can change for example if i want to edit this google geo code i can edit whatever i want even i can change the api name but make sure whatever the api name is here that should match the api name of the value that you are using in your custom metadata as a best practice i'll recommend to use a global pick list and then refer that global pick list at both the places now we have got it over here uh, we've got this pick list we've got this custom metadata next thing that we need to do is okay we need to go to custom metadata next thing that we need to do is we need to create custom metadata records over here now how we will create it go ahead and click on new for example let's say that it is google zero code the name will automate populate it automatically automatically we don't need to worry about that the class name what is a class when the user say that give me the latitude and longitude based on the google geocoder google location provider then what is the class name okay what what class you have implemented for that so in our previous video we have implemented class let me quickly open that class which is google geocode okay and this is the class that we have implemented you already have implemented this so you just need to put the class name over here then what is a google geo what is a geocode service so in our case it is google geocode this is the active yes it is an active go ahead and click on save let's talk about bing api now what is the class name again we developed in the previous session so we'll just go ahead and find the class name and the name of class is bing api we'll put it over here we'll mark this as active and from the drop down we will select bing api go ahead and save this there are two records which we have just created we have just set up for this custom metadata type again as you don't have this metadata so you might need to pause the video set up these records if you want to follow along with me otherwise you can also try after the video now we've got these two records the two records for our custom metadata bing api and geocode api now let's get back to our account field service uh, custom pick list field that we have Say that we are talking to implement or we are talking about to implement something related to open geo code so let's go ahead now business is very happy that okay you got implemented bing api you got implemented google geo code api let's implement it for our open case geo coder as well so what we will do is we'll go ahead and say okay let's quickly create a class and we'll say that open case api and we'll create a class now what this class will do first thing we already have the interface named geocode not geocode we have i geocode api okay we have this interface name we created in the previous video this is having two methods so this is our interface that we need this geocode google geocode this bing api open case geo api these are the concrete strategy classes we can also say that implementer classes okay we've got this implementer classes now we have developed few of the implementer classes two of them 
two or three of them we need one more so just go ahead and copy this code in your real time the code will not be same you will have to make the api call and then put the parameter according to that api call but for the demo purpose this is what we need to do we need to implement these two methods get latitude and longitude and get address okay and remember the name this name method name will be same across all the concrete classes the reason is that this particular interface having the same name so the na method will be same so we don't need to worry about that that uh, there will be a different name in the different implementer classes so we have got this we'll just go i'll just quickly change the name not change the name i'll just quickly change some value over here for the latitude and longitude and i can just put some address random over here okay i'm just putting something over here for the address and we will go ahead deploy this this is fine up to fine we created the class now you might be thinking okay you asked us to develop the custom metadata we created we created some record we added a pickles field on the account but where we are using this custom metadata right now what we are doing is in our geo code then there is yeah this is our geo code class which is the factory class which is being called from our another class which we have developed is account geo code this is our class from where we are actually calling that factory class now what we are doing is in our geo code in latitude and longitude method what we will do is we are getting this geo code service name this is what this is the value from our account pick list now what values could be these are the values that could be there in the value now what we will do is first thing what we are going to do is here inside geo code method itself we are going to create a static block okay this static block is going to execute before any method or even constructor okay what what here i'm going to do is i'm going to create a list of the geo code i have this geo code underscore mdt i'll just make sure it is correct so the api name is correct so i'll just here and okay i'll just to make sure we have got you now let's say that classes and then what we will use we will use static methods so we'll say custom metadata dot get all and then dot values i hope everyone is uh, aware about what this uh, this particular line is doing up to here so we have this custom metadata record we are saying that return all the records this is going to return the map of a string and our uh, this value geo code metadata and then when we say that values it is going to return list of all the records that we have okay and then what we are going to do is we are going to have a for loop over here and then we are going to iterate with this okay classes to implement okay we have just iterated over here and what we will do is we'll create one class over here um, not class we'll create a variable we'll say private static and we'll say map of a string and then this is going to be our geo code not geo code i geo code okay i geo code api this is what our interface that is what we are going to create it over here which is a private variable okay now why we are using this i geo code api you know any implementer class is a i geo code api that interface can hold the reference of our concrete classes that we also say as implementer classes that is why we are having this interface as a value so that we can hold the account pick list value as a key which is nothing which is a geo code class in our metadata and then the actual class instance in our metadata in our meta in our interface okay now what we will do is we'll check if this map has nothing that means if it is null okay We'll say if it is null then we are going to create a new map okay this is going to be a new map and then what we will do is we'll say okay dot put it is going to put what it is going to put is we are going to put the field name which is a geocode service which is going to hold the pick list value from account so we'll say cls dot geocode service and then for the other 
the key which is going to be class name now how, how we are going to put that class name remember in the previous video we have used the type class we are using type we use the new instance method so how we will do that we'll say okay type t equal to and we will say that type dot for name and here we are going to say cls dot class name okay and then here what we will use is we will use t dot new instance and remember this new instance must be type casted to the type of class which we want it could be your custom class it could be your standard class it could be your custom or standard object it could be anything one important thing about type uh, like this t dot new instance that new instance method can only work if your class does not have any constructor that means the constructor does not accept any parameter if the constructor started accept the parameter this t dot new instance is not going to work at all so this is the limitation that you need to keep in mind while you are developing this or using this type dot for name type dot new instance methods in your code now we have just got it easily over here into our google map api okay google geocode map was where we have implemented over here now we have got it now inside this latitude and longitude method what we will do is we will say here and let's quickly say we'll say if this map now this is a static map this will always last until the transaction is there so we'll say if this map dot contains key the geo so, uh, geo code service name the actual value of account in pick list okay then what we will say okay we will say <coughs> go ahead let's quickly have this the whole thing that we are going to have is now inside our if, if condition okay we will also have one else condition that we will be putting some sort of debug okay so we have given the debug as no geocode service found okay now here in this the code inside f block if block that whatever we have we will say if our code is containing the name okay then we will say okay just go ahead and uh, get that class name from our map and the class name is whatever the i code geo object we have okay and then call this method like uh, whatever the object we have get latitude and longitude method call that method and then store somewhere in the value and if uh, that value is valid it is going to return so now what will happen it is going to immediately find out if you have an entry there in your api or not like in your custom metadata or not and then if there is an entry it will return the outcome for us if not it will throw us the error okay now what we are going to do is we already have two entries for uh, for this okay let's quickly open one bing api okay we have an entry for Bing API, which is a uh, geocode service. We'll quickly get back over here. This Bing API is okay. This is the one. And then it says that Bing API behind the scene, it is actually Bing without a space. Okay, you can see here Bing API is a class name, service name is also. To make sure that the values are same, we'll just quickly go to Google Chrome. Okay, not Chrome, basically the developer console. Here I will just quickly execute the query on the geocode class name geocode object the custom metadata and query all the stand required custom fields and we will see this is these are the class name and these are the values you can quickly see right without a space so what we will do is we will have one apex class you know that in the previous video we have created one class not class we have under account geocode service yeah we have this test for testing purpose we have this code right so the bing api is there now let's go ahead select this and then execute this anonymous code so now what we have done is we just executed the anonymous code with the geocode service bing api the code is successfully ran and if you try to find out debug okay let's see if there is a debug yeah here it is we got this latitude and longitude and this debug is over here we got whatever the values we are returning and what values we are returning if you go to bing api class you will find these are the values and under bing api there is one more debug 
So if you scroll to the up, scroll to up, you will see there is another debug. Okay, that means for Bing API, it is working fine. Now let's quickly go to account geocode. Okay, and then try to provide some value like Google Map, which is not there. So if we add this Google Map and then again select this code, and we will try to execute it, and then we will see what debug we are actually getting. Okay. The code has been successfully ran. And if you go here on the debug, we are getting latitude, uh, which is uh, null. Okay. This is one debug which is getting printed over here. And if you again scroll to the top, we will find no geocode service found. And that is actually coming from this. Where is, yeah, this is the one coming from our main class, which is factory class. Okay. From here, we are saying no. Geocode service form. Now, if we you are saying okay, we are just get, giving them the debug. End user will not know that what could be the issue. They might be thinking that okay, I will be able to see the geocode. But uh, what if we wanted to give some certain message to the user saying that okay, geocode service is not found. Contact your system admin to set up this or uh, change, uh, raise a change request for this. So for this, what we can do is we can quickly create an internal class. We'll say that public. I'll say class, and what I'll say is I'll say named name exception, okay, which is going to extend the exception class, okay. And this is it. That is it that I wanted to have inside this class. So what I'm creating is this is basically nothing. This is the exception class by which I'm going to throw the exception. And this exception will be handled by the developer. And what they can do is they can just go ahead, store it somewhere in the error log object, and tell them, okay, for this account, this is the exception which happened. If there is any exception, now what we will do is we will say, okay, if there is no service provider found, okay, no geocode service found, what I'll do is I'll say throw new named exception, okay, and here I will just put some. No geocode service provider found. Please contact your administrator. Okay. These are this is the message that I wanted to give them. Now let's go ahead. Deploy this piece of code. Yeah, the code is now deployed. Again, get back to our service class. And this is where we are going to execute the code. So there is no, we see the code is successfully executed. And as soon as we scroll to the up. We will see that there is some error and that we got some exception and here is the exception. We got geocode dot exception, the name exception, the name of our class and we found the same message which we have provided to our admin. Okay, what were we are returning to the developer and now any developer who is using these classes could easily handle the exception, tell the system that this is the error that we are getting. Now, for example, for this Google Maps, okay, let's go ahead and make this class. We'll say Google Map API, okay. This is a simple class that I'm making, and then again, I'll take the code from this I I G, which is the class is Bing API, and then I will just put it over here, okay. For just for I'm taking this just for. Let's quickly add implements keyword first. Okay. We have just got the structure of a code, the code which basically the methods that we need to implement from the interface. And now here we can just uh, get latitude long instance uh, inside Google Map API. You can say Google Map. I will also change some values over here, so you can easily see that we are able to change the values over here. Okay, I can just add some address as well. It will just add any sort of address for get address method. Go ahead and deploy. Now this is something that you are doing for your new implementation. Okay, you have got some requirement to do the new implementation. So what you need to do is you need to quickly go ahead and create the class. Implement the methods, provide your own logic, implement your own logic what you want. And then what you need to do is just go to your custom metadata. Now you see here, right? What you are doing is you're just changing at one place. The other classes are untouched you go to your service class this is untouched there is no issue you go to your factory class 
this is untouched no issue you go to your interface that is untouched there are no changes the change is there that you need to add one extra class you need to add that value over here in your field api name because that is where the user will be selecting and then go ahead to your metadata for example i'm cloning this okay and add that one extra record to your metadata i'll say google maps put the class name and uh, select the google map from here save it now you have just saved the extra extra record we here right now you can go to your service class again select the same code that we are using to test and then execute it this time there won't be any error there won't be any exception and we should be able to see the debug the first thing the debug whatever we are returning from our google map and if there are any additional debug inside the google maps api uh, that concrete class that implementer class we will be able to see it over here so now you see right how dynamically our code is selecting what solution to execute and this you can implement in any of your project i'm sure you will start using this i i believe that you will start using this kind of solution now one last thing before i uh, close this video is you might be thinking if you are not using this active checkbox why we are even using why we have even created this checkbox over here so we will be basically using let's quickly copy this api name and get back to your factory class and here inside this inside our particular for loop what we will do is we are also going to do something we will say if cls dot is active then only do all these things now this is something we are taking care about every single thing okay if it is not active it is not going to put into this map and if that service is not there in map this map is not going to get that and then we are going to get the exception now we are going to quickly retest it i'm going to deactivate this particular google api itself which we have just tested and we'll get back over here i'll make sure i deployed this code to the org yeah that code is there now we'll get back to our service class execute the same line of code okay and then we will see the error and you see the name here like the color of file is also changed to red if you go here top and you will see the error now you can also rectify the message you can say no sir geocode service found please contact your administrator or you can also append some message like uh, uh, please check if the geocode service is active or not that kind of message you can the error like friendly message that we can give to admin so that they can also easily debug so this is it about how you develop a strategy pattern or uh, what the strategy pattern is and how dynamically it can select the solution at the runtime so if you are still here thank you very much and uh, again please uh, hit a like uh, hit subscribe button if you haven't done yet and uh, we'll meet into the next video with some again either pattern or some concept with salesforce thank you